okay, okay. I know it's been a while. So hey guys, what's up? It's the Snake Dude 1814 here and it's time for a reptile room tour. Now, I know that I really haven't done a reptile room tour since I think it was January. So it, it's been a few months. And the truth is, my lack of reptile room tours has been either to lack of updates or me being too much of a lazy <laughs> to uh, film them. So I finally decided to get up and actually spend a whole day to film an entire reptile room tour for you guys. And I figured to start this off We'll kick it off with Hash, my Carolina corn snake. As you guys can probably remember from past videos, I have mislabeled him as an Okatee, and the truth is an Okatee corn snake would have a lot more of a brighter orange color, deeper blacks and deeper reds. Hash obviously lacks that. However, he is nonetheless as important to me as any other corn snake would be because he was actually one of my first snakes I kept and he's actually going to be the oldest reptile I have as part of the reptile room tour. This fall, or I should say this month, he's going to be 12 years old. Can you guys believe that? He is just absolutely stunning. You can't beat his colors on him. He really is just a fantastic snake. You guys know me, I love corn snakes so much. They really are a fantastic pet snake. I just can't emphasize that enough about them. They really are awesome snakes. And again, on top of their pattern, the colors that they display, and just their overall ease of care, you guys know that I always recommend them to novice keepers who are interested in starting to keep a snake. Not much has changed other than his lighting. You guys will know that I used to keep my corn snakes with basking heat. I have since taken that off due to switching lighting around. And my reptile room now stays warm enough to where the only heat they require is through a heat mat. Nonetheless, that does not mean I have taken lighting off of them. They are still provided with UVB 12 hours a day. And I do still see them bask and use it. So it definitely benefits them. Uh, again, if you're gonna keep a snake, even if it's just one pet, I always recommend if you wanna have display lighting, get a UVB bulb. Corn snakes especially do benefit from it. I've definitely noticed stronger feeding responses out of Hash in particular, who's always been a bit picky with eating. And then of course, just basking behavior and his sheds tend to be healthier as well. So UVB does work wonders for him. In terms of supplying his UVB, I'm using a 30 inch Pro Soul fixture. I'm only using three out of the six outlets for full coverage UVB. However, it really does make his 40 gallon Zilla critter cage look fantastic and I really like the lighting output on it. It does make it not look as bright as his habitat was before. However, that's just this downside of not having a basking light on there. The truth is guys, if I did decide to keep a basking light on there, his habitat would overheat and he wouldn't be able to cool off as easily. That's fine nonetheless because he has a heat mat so he can still get to a warm area. The lack of a basking lamp just prevents his whole ambient temperature from overheating. That is Hash, the Carolina corn snake. And now let's move on to our next snake. So up next in the reptile room, we have Vegas, my second male Carolina corn snake. And an interesting fact about Vegas is he's actually the twin brother of Hash. When I received Hash in Vegas, as I said, they were my first snakes that I ever got. They are from the same clutch of eggs. Now you'll notice Vegas is a lot larger than Hash. And the truth is, Vegas is what would be considered an average sized adult male corn snake. So he will also be 12 years old this August, and uh, that would make him as well one of the older reptiles in my collection. I don't know who hatched first, unfortunately. All I know is that they are from the same clutch of eggs. As you can see though, Vegas has that true classic Carolina color, bright orange, bright reds on the saddle marks, and then that beautiful checkered belly. The reason corn snakes got their name is actually because of this checkered belly, and the reason why is because the checkered pattern resembles Indian corn. Honestly, I think it's a great way to name them that. For many of the people who did not grow up around a corn area like I did here in Illinois, another name for them is the red rat snake because corn snakes are in the rat snake family or the genus Pantherophis. Now, definitely one thing that I find interesting about the 
characteristic of Vegas is that even though he's the bigger of the two, he's actually the more handleable. I can only have hash out for very short sessions. As you saw earlier, most of what I have to enjoy from him is seeing him move around his terrarium. Vegas, on the other hand, is more of a lap snake. I can watch TV with him and take him to some educational shows where he won't freak out being touched by other people. In terms of his setup, it's the same principle as Hash. I took the basking light off because my reptile room has a much higher ambient heat now with some of the new lighting rigs that I've designed. And because of that, he is primarily heated through a under tank heater or a heat pad. However, I still provide him with UVB as well. And if you guys can't tell from January, his setup has changed. Originally, I tried to mimic sort of like a cypress swamp with pointing upward pieces of driftwood. As you can imagine, those short pieces of driftwood got trampled by him because he is such a large active corn snake. And so, I've actually swapped all those pieces of driftwood out for one large piece of sandblasted grapevine that covers the entire length of his habitat. I am yet to see him perch on it. I have no doubt that he does when I'm asleep, as corn snakes are primarily crespecular and nocturnal, so they'll be active at dawn, dusk, and wee hours of the night. In terms of his setup, he's in a 40 gallon front opening Zilla terrarium. I actually won this about a year ago from a Herpers TV giveaway. And what I can say is that these terrariums are very nice. I love the front opening style. They offer a lot more ventilation through the ventilation strip at the front so air goes in. You don't have to worry about the tank getting stagnant. And then not to mention the screen has that really nice beneficial humidity cover insert that I can put in when he's shedding. And because of that, he's had perfect sheds since I moved him into there. Otherwise, that is Vegas, my male Carolina corn snake, and as you can see, he is doing lovely as always. So next up in the reptile collection here is Chili, the Sunglow albino corn snake. And I feel like I change his morph every single reptile room update, but the truth is it's finally been decided on. I posted in a couple corn snake groups a while back about him, and the truth is, if you remember from the last reptile room update, I thought he was a she, and that she would have been a fire morph. That is not true. He's actually just a typical albino. However, the sun glow albino refers to an albino corn snake that has very reduced white along the saddle marks. The saddle marks are just these little bands that you see down the side of his body right here, except there's a lack of white in them. Currently, he's feeding weekly on fuzzy mice. He's doing an excellent job of pounding his food and as for now, I'm still growing him out in tubs. If you guys haven't seen my hatchling corn snake setup, you will actually see a younger chili here. And he was actually kept in a exoterra faunarium. He has since outgrown that and he's now residing in this 32 quart plastic tub. He's doing great though and I can't wait to see how he will look as an adult. He will ultimately be a very lovely, almost solid orange colored corn snake. So I can't wait to see how he develops. So here we have Harriet, my female Chinese water dragon. As you guys know, she's a very popular animal here on the channel, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because I try to emphasize how bad of a lizard this animal is to keep, because despite their cheap price tag, they are a multi-thousand dollar investment to maintain properly. In terms of updates though, her habitat has definitely had the biggest change going on. If you guys remember a video from a while back, she actually now has a custom aquarium in there with a filter and everything for her to swim in. Being a water dragon, they do like to swim. However, you need to remember when keeping them in captivity, they always prefer height. And because of that, her habitat is custom built by my father and I. It is four feet long, two feet deep, and five feet tall. I've got tons of foliage in there for her, way more than when I first started the terrarium build. The truth is, the more foliage she has in there, the more secure she feels. If you guys can't tell from the back of her head, actually, on the topic of water dragons, she is actually missing a few spines from last time. And the truth is, I wasn't paying much attention to the humidity, and because of that, she had a bad shed. Unfortunately, she did lose a couple spines. And even people like myself who try to keep my care top notch, sometimes we make mistakes. Thankfully, that skin is starting to heal over. I do not believe their spines regenerate. Either way, she's still a lovely and great animal ambassador. I take her to show with me to educate other people on why these are not good pet lizards. Because even though she stays calm like this, often sent out water dragons are not as handleable as a species. Other updates with her, I've actually re-fixed her lighting setup. If you guys can recall from before, I was using two Zilla mini halogen domes. I have since upgraded to 
the Zoomed Mini Combo Deep Dome in a PAR 3880 watt halogen bulb. The PAR 38 is a very bright, intense spot lamp, and the way that it works, it does not evaporate the air humidity. And due to her former lack of humidity causing shed issues, I knew this light was definitely going to be an upgrade I had to try out. Needless to say, it works wonders. The humidity stays incredibly high in there, sometimes upwards of 85%, and then the heat from the bulb also keeps her at a nice toasty temperature. So overall, that is Harriet, my female Chinese water dragon. Other than her shedding issues, she is doing great. She's eating a happy staple of dubia roaches daily. She destroys them. And then of course, I'll supplement other insects in there such as superworms, crickets, hornworms once in a while. And in an upcoming video, you'll see her eat some mice. So in these two 15 quart tubs, I have the pair of rough scaled Samboas. They're doing great as you guys can see. Here's the male right here poking his head out. They're actually about to eat again like most of the animals after this video. Overall, they're doing great. They're taking frozen thawed fuzzies weekly. And honestly, I'm really excited to be working with them for a breeding project. It'll definitely be a few years though as I don't intend to power feed them. Uh, it's just good on their bodies, lets them grow at a natural rate. If you guys haven't seen from some of my Instagram posts, don't forget to follow at snakedude1814. I do share photos of a lot of these guys as well as the other animals in the collection. And these guys definitely have some of the best colors. So next up on the reptile room tour, we would actually have Rocky the Bearded Dragon. And while as you can see, his setup looks great. He's got the 30 inch Zilla Pro Soul fixture with heat, UVB and everything he needs you're probably wondering why I don't have him out right now. And the truth is guys, he actually started to develop a lump on his jaw. He was taken to the vet, he had it surgically removed, he's been on antibiotics. However, I'm not gonna take him out just because he needs to sort of stay in his habitat and slowly recover. It's really important that he isn't stressed with and messed around with too much because he really needs to be eating and back on the road to recovery. That's why if you haven't noticed, I haven't done a lot of bearded dragon videos because a lot of the time that has gone towards Rocky has been towards making him feel better. Thankfully, he is starting to eat again. He's being a happy little beard. He's doing everything he should be. But for those who are wondering why I don't have him out right now, that's why. Otherwise, update wise on him, he is still in his 40 gallon Zoomed half top sliding terrarium. He's doing everything a bearded dragon should be other than being just a little ifed up and bumped around from his post-surgery. Otherwise, we can move on to the next reptile, Jazz the Crested Gecko. So right here we have Jazz the Crested Gecko, and honestly, not much has really changed update-wise with her. She's still in her 12x12x18 12 by 12 by Exoterra, however, she will be due for an upgrade very likely in the near future as she is growing like a weed. One thing that I can definitely say about her is that her color just keeps on improving with each shed every time. She's destroying small dubia roaches and Pangea crested gecko diet. And overall, that's all I really have to say about her. She's doing really well and just being the best crested gecko a crested gecko can be. Okay. <laughs> so last, but certainly not least in the reptile room tour, we have Zilla the Argentine black and white tegu. She is doing amazing if you can't clearly tell. Always inquisitive, super active. The only thing that has changed with this setup is the fact that I've added one by four pieces of plywood, and that's simply to act as a substrate barrier. Tegus like to dig, and they like a lot of spaces to burrow, and on these doors here, the substrate would actually jam it. So the pieces of plywood just makes it easier to open the door and clean the habitat. Otherwise, setup is still the same. She's loving her giant six by two by 18 inch tall brace exotics cage. Bought this at NARBC in March and this should last her a good long while before she needs her final upgrade of something like an 8 foot by 4 foot by 4 foot. Till then guys, this is Zilla the Tegu and uh, well, she's doing great. I mean, she's a happy healthy Tegu. So overall guys, I really hope you enjoyed this reptile room update. Like I said, a lot has happened to where now my snakes are all on only UVB and the water dragon now has some of the best lighting I think I've ever been able to come up with in terms of a proper setup. As you guys know, I always strive to have the best habitats that I possibly can because I want the best for my animals. So if you like to see nice habitats and you guys want to learn more about reptiles, hit the subscribe button down below and always, always, always guys, stay tuned for the next video. Don't forget to check out my social media sources, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as I'm always posting updates on there. And until then guys, this has been the Snake Dude 1814 and I will see y'all in the next video. Adios!